view, which is the multiple access technique. If you have read the digital electronics, in the digital electronics, you must have come across a term called multiplexing. Multiplexing means one input, many output, or many input, one output. That is demultiplexing. It's equivalent in uh, communication is also multiplexing, but there is a small difference. The small difference is uh, in the communication system, multiplexing means you send more than one signal at a time over one channel and the channel is connected to many users or many users are connected to that channel. So each user will receive multiple signals which is transmitted over one channel. Then that is called multiplexing. Now uh, from multiplexing comes the word or comes the term multiple access. Multiple access is actually the application of multiplexing digital com in communication system. So when you apply multiplexing in communication system, the process is called multiple access. In multiple access, multiple people can access the same uh, channel. The technique is called multiple access. And if each user uh, can receive the desired signal for the user. So although there will be multiple number of signals, the signal which is desired for the user 1 will be received by user 1. Signal which is for user 2 will be received by user 2. So that way, signal which is desired for user N will be received by user N. And the channel will be carrying N number of signals which are designated to reach the signal users n number of users. So that is what is multiple access. Now what are the techniques for multiple access? Um, there are different techniques for multiple access. We will study each one of them. We will have an overview of each one of these multiple access techniques. Most of the multiple access techniques which are used in wireless communication, not in wired communication or in optical communication. There, there are other multiple access techniques which we will not discuss. We will discuss about the multiple access technique used mostly in wireless communication system. Uh, and the issue of multiple access, now let us come to the issue of multiple access. When we want to allow communication between many different users from one point, then we are going to use multiple access technique. How we are going to use this multiple access technique? Because we know that in free space, spectrum, which means the frequency, is a source. So uh, all frequency everybody cannot use we can use a portion of frequency which is called spectrum that is the shared between users. So mostly the frequency will be partitioned between users. If there are n users, there is a frequency band, then that band will be equally divided between those n users. That is a restriction when we are using in free space communication or when we are using communication system because frequency is very costly and it is difficult to generate higher frequencies. Lower frequency is comparatively easier to generate 
handling higher frequency, generating higher frequency, and the equipment of uh, required for higher frequencies are very costly. Uh, very, if you go to very high frequency, therefore, when we use the spectrum, we are at comparatively lower frequency. When we are at comparatively lower frequency, the spectrum width or bandwidth of the spectrum is limited. Since the bandwidth of the spectrum is limited, that is to be shared by between the users, those who are going to use that. Therefore, we have to partition the frequency band and there is a limitation. This resource is the frequency, the resource is being shared. We can divide it or partition it in terms of time, in terms of frequency or of coding. Uh, so any signal and that can be data signal can be partitioned in terms of time, frequency or coding. Now we asked about signals earlier. Any signal is of the form A sin omega t cross theta or A cos omega t cross theta. So A is amplitude, forget the amplitude. Then it, uh, it is dependent on uh, frequency omega or time. So we can divide frequency or we can divide time. Then uh, we also discussed that signal can be discretized, made digital. When we make the signal digital, it is coded. It is in the form of number 0, 1. So it is coded. Therefore, how we can generate a code uh, for partitioning the signal. So once we the signal is coded, that code can be partitioned. Or we can have different codes. Partition means we can have different codes for different signals. If you have two signals, we can have two codes which are orthogonal or nearly orthogonal to each other. What is meant by orthogonality? You have already read what is orthogonality of two functions, simple function, sine and cosine function. If you take sine and cosine function, integrate it over theta from 0 to 2 pi or 0 to pi, integration of sine and cosine. So sine theta into cos theta d theta integration, that will give you 0. If they are orthogonal, that indicates that they are orthogonal. If that gives you 1, then they, it, is, it indicates that the functions are normal. Similarly, in case of signals, if we multiply two signals, and get zero, nothing is coming out, then those two signals are orthogonal. If you multiply two signals and get one, so everything we are getting out, then it, they are normal signals. We are going to discuss these things uh, in some details now. So and let us start with the first technique, which is called frequency division multiple access or in short, it is called FDMA, Frequency Division Multiple Access or FDMA. In this, what we do is the whole channel uh, has a bandwidth. So that bandwidth, bandwidth means it is a range of frequency. So that range of frequency, suppose it is from 1 to 10. Assume that the range of frequency is from 1 to 10 then we will divide it into maybe 5 or 6 divisions, 6 equal divisions or 5 equal divisions. We divide it into or 10 equal divisions. We cannot divide it into 20 equal divisions. Uh, uh, all those things we can do. Now when we do that, which means within the band we have sub-band. So within the range of 1 to 10, we have sub-ranges. So each division, suppose we have from 1 to 10, each band now within this band, original band of 1 to 10, within this band we have sub-bands, each sub-band is 2 megahertz. Uh, so 1 to 10 megahertz in that, each sub-band is 2 megahertz. So we have 5 sub-bands in that, each is of 2 megahertz. So 1 to 2, 1 to 4 is one band, 4 to 6 is another band. 
six to eight is another band eight to ten is another band so in this way so each band is transmitted through the channel uh, and uh, the first band will be in channel 1 second band will be in channel 2 third band will be in channel 3 nth band will be in the channel n so that is what is shown in the figure that frequency is divided into n channels each channel consists of a specific bandwidth so what we will do is in the communication system the user who is using the mobile phone will be placed into different frequency bands so first user may be in the channel 1 second user may be in channel 2 third user may be in channel n so this is how we are going to place the users then there are two different methods of dealing with transmission and reception of a for a given user remember if you are transmitting at one frequency uh, you should avoid receiving at the same frequency because once the frequency is same there can be interference so you transmit in one frequency you receive in another frequency hmm. so that uh, we require either frequency division duplexing or time division duplexing we'll see what is frequency division duplexing and what is time division duplexing those we'll see as uh, now now let us start with this a uh, frequency division duplexing this is a full duplex technique now what is full duplex technique in communication we have two techniques one is called simplex technique one is called duplex technique in simplex technique and the trans from you can transmit from the transmitter to the receiver but receiver cannot transmit towards the transmitter so that is only a one way communication as you know your radio stations tv stations they transmit towards users you are receiver that is called simplex because you cannot send any signal or any information to radio station or tv station over the channel in which the communication is occurring but the radio station or tv station they transmit signal to you so that is an example of simplex then comes the half duplex there are two types of duplex one is called half duplex both the receiver and transmitter are present when the transmitter is transmitting the receiver will receive but at the same time receiver cannot transmit now after the transmitter ends its transmission then the receiver can transmit and the original transmitter now becomes receiver an example is you might have seen in movies that police uh, patrolling cars are moving and in the police patrolling car they are discussing they are so um, uh, giving instructions and they are receiving instruction from control room so when the control room sends an instruction that is one way while control room is sending the instruction the police person in the car or in the jeep cannot give any instruction now when the police person gives the instruction from the jeep the control room cannot give any instruction control room will only listen listen so either the police is receive a listening or the control room is listening either of the one or either one of these is happening that is called half duplex duplex means two way transmission half duplex means it is two way but at a particular time only one way transmission is occurring which means there is no simultaneous transmission simultaneous two way communication is not possible simultaneously one way communication is possible but in both the way both the direction it is bi directional then comes the full duplex in full duplex it is like your mobile phone or phone communication where 
both the ends at the same time you can talk so it is bidirectional simultaneously bidirectional in time it is simultaneously bidirectional that is called full duplex so frequency division duplexing is a full duplex method now you can see what uh, the picture in the picture what we have we have a transmitter we have a receiver transmitter usually we represent it as dx receiver usually you replace uh, uh, i you represent it as rx so you can see there are two bands one is transmitting band one is receiving band the red one tx band is the transmit band rx the receiving band r is the blue one they are transmitted over the channel or the over the duplexer and they go to the antenna um so antenna is transmitting antenna is also receiving the uh, unit which is connected to trans uh, antenna is called duplexer so here what we do we use separate frequency channels for transmitting and receiving what is the advantage of that there will be no interference because they will be at different frequencies so you use separate frequency channels have for transmitting and receiving this allows simultaneous transmission and reception because we have separate frequency bands so this isolates the receiver from transmitter to uh, with the duplexer we cannot communicate directly between users only between handset and base station communication how uh, will occur now what do what i mean by this which means you have a mobile phone your friend has a mobile phone when you call your friend you cannot directly call your friend from your phone the signal will not go to your friend's phone from your phone the signal will go to a base station <laughs> the base station means uh, there is a tower it will go to the tower it will be received in the tower there is a station associated with the tower that is called base station so it will go to the tower from the tower again it will come to your friend so that is what it means <coughs> so uh, you cannot communicate directly between you just only between headset and base station is possible because of the duplexer why because of the duplexer because you will transmit two frequencies so one frequency will go to the base station then it uh, the your friend is receiving so the base station will transmit the receiving frequency to your friend similarly when your friend transmits so transmitting frequency will come to the base station then you will receive that will come in the other frequency the change of that occurs in the duplexer um, so that is uh, why it, you cannot have direct uh, use between this advantage is we have isolated the users disadvantage is duplexer has high insertion loss which means when you give the signal into the duplexer the duplexer consumes some power so that is high insertion loss it attenuates signal passing through it and it takes twice the bandwidth because one bandwidth for transmission one bandwidth for reception so twice the bandwidth now i have come to the time division duplexing instead of frequency division duplexing let us consider the time division duplexing which is a half duplex system in this what we do is we have a switch instead of a duplexer you have a switch switch is connected to the transmitter for some time then it is connected to the receiver some for some time this connection the changing of switch from transmitter to receiver and receiver to transmitter that change change over that is occurring following the uh, nyquist criteria of sampling so depending on the frequency lowest frequency the switch will be thrown open and thrown closed so it will be connected to transmitter then it will go to receiver then it will come to transmitter the time difference 
uh, in which it will go this this way it will oscillate between transmitter and connect uh, receiver that depends on the uh, on request criteria so you have a control for switch which controls the speed of the switch at which speed it will be connected to transmitter and receiver now when is it is connected to transmitter receiver is disconnected so receiver will not receive when it is connected to receiver transmitter is disconnected so transmitter will not receive therefore this is half duplex side time division uh, duplexing is half duplex in nature but uh, it uses the desired frequency channel for transmitter and receiver one frequency channel can be used you don't require two channels one frequency that is enough because both are not operating at the same time therefore no question of uh, interference so you send transmit and receive signals at different times allow communication directly between the users you don't require uh, a base station but this is usually not a desirable thing advantage is switch has low insertion loss relative to the duplexer uh, and uh, there is uh, no isi intersymbol interference is less then disadvantage is uh, uh, receiver more sensitive to transmitted signal from other users here the higher latency higher latency means higher delay because if there will be a delay uh, in receiving and transmitting because the switch is connected uh, the connection so time for switch there is a time gap when it is connected to transmitter it is not connected to receiver after a time gap it comes back to receiver then after a time gap it goes back to transmitter so there will be a delay so that delay is there so you have higher latency latency means delay then we will come to the time division multiple access we have discussed frequency division multiple access Uh, in frequency division multiple access what we did we have a different uh, frequ uh, frequency bands for different channels and in the channels we use either half duplex or full duplex uh, thing and uh, the frequency division multiple access the problem is isi inter symbol uh, interference when we are using digital communication mostly we are using the uh, digital communication since there will be there is a possibility of frequency overlapping there is a possibility of interference now if we avoid frequency overlapping there then what we will do is we will introduce guard bands between two channels so the in the guard band there will be no transmission which means that much of frequency is lost so that much of uh, spectrum is wasted we are not using it it is wasted if you are not using it it is wasted so wastage of spectrum of course in uh, uh, fdma to avoid that we come to tdma to avoid two things one is isi other is wastage of spectrum to avoid these two we use tdma tdma is uh, used uh, was used in this second generation of mobile communication fdma was used in the first generation of mobile communication so why we go for tdma two things one is to reduce the wastage of spectrum second is uh, to reduce the isi the these two are the most important thing for which we can then to use uh, the channel capacity higher channel capacity uh, they are in the fdma channel capacity is low why channel capacity is low because each channel has a smaller bandwidth the whole complete bandwidth is not available to all channels a portion of the bandwidth is available to a channel now you know from shannon's theorem c channel capacity c is equal to b b is the bandwidth of the channel into log base 2 uh, of 1 plus snr which means if we increase the bandwidth the channel capacity will increase 
therefore or if we improve the snr channel capacity will increase therefore when we have smaller bandwidth in fdma the channel capacity is reduced so you cannot send more information when you require to send more information like data text etc in addition to voice you want to send the first generation was only voice second generation we started using text data etc so you require more information to be pushed so how to send more the, uh, information uh, we, you have to increase the capacity to increase the ca capacity we require two things either increase the bandwidth or increase the snr or both so to increase the bandwidth what we do in tdma is we use the complete uh, bandwidth available to us instead of dividing the bandwidth into sub bands use the complete bandwidth available to us so that is that way you, since the bandwidth has increased the channel capacity will increase so this came in the second generation so in this what we do we place users into different time slots so um, you can see here one time frame is we are using n number of users in different time slots user 1 is red user 2 is uh, a blue nth user is green then uh, next time frame there will be n users next time frame there will be n users so first user when first user is using second to n users are not using the channel in that time frame then when the second user will use for first to n will not use except second user so that way it will continue so a given time slot repeats according to the time frame period in the time division multiplexing this is uh, most of the time combined with fdma in the second generation this allows many users to occupy the same frequency channel therefore more bandwidth therefore more uh, information so capacity of the uh, uh, band uh, uh, channel is more application in the second generation mobile you know this was applied in gsm which is global system for mobiles gprs which is general packet radio system or edge which is extended data rate for gsm then uh, we can look at the third generation from the second generation when we came to the third generation then uh, we started using something called the coding cdma uh, so the channel is partitioned using orthogonal coding or nearly orthogonal coding we have discussed uh, today in the beginning what is meant by orthogonality so uh, orthogonal code means if we multiply two codes they will give us zero if they are orthogonal if they are not orthogonal they will give us one example is shown here on correlated signal two signals which are on correlated signal a and signal b look at signal a and signal b so xt is signal a ct is signal b if you multiply them on their the in the multiplier so b is the code ct is the code xt is the signal so ct multiplied it with xt you get yt similarly minus a is uh, shown here uh, b remains as it is so xt into ct gives you yt now uh, if they are correlated uh, you can see when they are uncorrelated you can see the waveform the red one is the waveform when you multiply these two a into b the you can see uh, on the red one is the resulting you can easily find out what will be the resulting waveform when one is multiplied by zero that will be zero or one is multiplied by minus one that will give you minus one when one is multiplied by one that will give you one use that principle now uh, this is the time the uh, uh, in the time then uh, draw this uh, signal so if you look at this a and b b is minus 1 at the beginning then it goes uh, for a small time it remains minus 
during that period a is 1 so in that period if you multiply that then in the beginning this will be minus 1 minus 1 into 1 will be minus 1 so the start of the red signal is minus 1 then after that period b becomes 1 a remains 1 so 1 into 1 is 1 so that period it is 1 so it goes to p then a becomes minus 1 and while b becomes 1 a becomes minus 1 in o over a small port portion so again so resulting signal now becomes minus 1 so this way uh, it uh, the uh, resulting signal is generated that you can see only thing that you can see is the, the uh, when we have uncorrelated signal ab and ab minus ab the resulting signal is flip the top red one and the lower red one they are flip now if you go to correlated signal so you have a b instead of a we have b instead of minus a we have minus b there you can see if we have correlated signal correlated means it is same as the earlier one completely fully correlated so a is fully correlated to b which means a is equal to b so b multiplies with b that gives you 1 b multiplies with minus b that gives you minus 1 so two correlation cases we considered here two independent uh, random sequences we saw as inputs this results in a random bernoulli sequence that we saw for the uncorrelated signal same bernoulli sequence results in 1 or minus 1 depending on the relative polarity if it is b b then it will be 1 if it is minus b b it will be minus 1 so this is how you partition now based on that we develop a method which is called code division multiple access cdma in cdma look at this figure is the figure x1 t x2 t these are the signals pn1 t pn2 t these are the codes so and the codes will be multiplied by the signal to generate the output all the outputs will be combined together they will be transmitted so transmit signals combines in the free space that will be transmitted then you will receive it when you receive it what you will do is at the receiver side you will multiply with the received signal the required code so you will be having a pn1 or pn2 depending on which user you are if you are user 1 you will use pn1 the code pn1 if you user 2 you will use the code pn2 etc when you multiply that you will receive back the original signal that we will see so what we do here is we assign a unique code sequence to each transmitter or each signal data values are encoded in the transmitter output stream by varying the polarity of the transmitter code sequence so when it is one both are one it will be one if one of them is minus one it will be minus one if both are minus one it will be one so that is how it will be done each pulse in the data sequence has a period of td td uh so t is the uh, time period and d uh, basically is for the, uh, this uh, um or d is for digital so since we are using digital so td so digital signal pulse we are using so each pulse will have a time period of td individual pulses represent binary data values so if you have td uh, over a td Uh, you have one or zero or minus one and one and minus one, depending on that your signal will be uh, constructed. Each pulse in the code sequence has a time period of T C. T C uh, C stands for code, and T C must be smaller than T D. So that is important. T C has to be smaller than uh, R C D. we can see the size of tc and you can see the size of td in the above uh, picture individual pulses in the code sequence these are called chips 
each pulse of duration Tc is called a chip. So individual pulses are called chips. Now uh, once we transmit, we will receive, uh, receive at the receiver. The receiver will select the desired transmitted signal through its port. Now as I told you, if you are user 1, you will use PN1. If you are user 2, you will use PN2. So if you are user 1, you multiply with whatever you have received. With that, you multiply PN1. So that is uh, going to give you the uh, receiving signal. You can see what happens here. In the, look at the lower picture. Uh, at the lower part, in the lower part, we have uh, considering the uh, user 1. So user 1 has received both X1T and X2T, both are coded. So the user 1 has received Y1T and Y2T. Yt is equal to Y1T into y, uh, Y1T plus Y2T. Those both are present there. In Y1T plus Y2T, we multiply PN1T. So once you multiply PN1T uh, as the code at the user end, then we'll receive back XT. XT is the original signal with higher frequency terms, as we have discussed in the amplitude modulation system. So uh, to suppress the higher frequency term, we use the low pass filter. Low, after the low pass filter, we get back the desired signal in the desired channel that you can see. So the lowest signal, the at the bottom, the signal that you see, that is the received signal. Uh, okay. So the receiver, what happens at the receiver is, the receiver correlates its input with the desired transmitter port. Once it is done, then data from the desired transmitter port is restored. Data from other transmitters remains randomized. So they will not be received actually. Actually, we will receive the data from the desired transmitter. Now, let us compare this frequency domain view of chip versus the data sequence. So that you can see uh, from the two figures uh, in the top figure and the bottom figure, you know. If you look at a pulse uh, of short duration or a long duration, the pulse in the top one is of short duration. The pulse in the bottom one, the red pulse, is of a larger duration. So TC and TD, they, these two you are seeing. So TC is the blue one, TD is the red one. If you compare these two pulses, then in the frequency domain, what will happen for these pulses? In the frequency domain, PT, which has the smaller time duration, will have a larger frequency band. Uh, why? The smaller the pulse, the more frequency content is in the pulse. So it will have larger frequency band. Whereas TD, which has a larger width, so it will have less frequency content. So that is shown in the bottom picture. TC, the blue portion uh, of the spectrum, that is wider compared to the red portion in the spectrum that you can see there. In the upper uh, figure, we are showing the convolution of TC with, with RTC, its convolution signal. And both we are showing and the after convolution data one uh, is convolved with TC that is giving you XT. Second is again uh, data two that is convolved with uh, TD, that is giving you XT. So these two XT, you can see what is the nature of the signal, how it is changed. So data and chip sequences, they operate on different time scales, as you can see here. Because the widths are different, they are operating on different time scales. Since they are operating on different time scales, their associated spectra have different width and different height as I have explained now. 
So this is uh, between the the comparison between cheap and data sequence. Then uh, let us look at uh, the frequency domain view of the CDMA. So in the frequency domain view, we will consider the data. So the data one is blue, data two is uh, green. So we are sending two data. Uh, you can have n number of data, but two is good enough. So we have transmitter one, which is sending the blue data, SX1. SX is the spectrum of uh, the data one. SX2S is the spectrum. SX2 is the spectrum of data two we are sending them. Then we are multiplying them with uh, the, in the time domain, we are multiplying them with PN1T or PN2T, which is a convolution in frequency domain. So since we are multiplying them with the PN1T or PN2T, um, so the output will have the frequency of PN1T or PN2T, because PN1T and PN2T are modulated. X1T and X2T are modulating our baseband. PN1T and PN2T are modulated. Modulated signal will have a larger frequency, so you have a larger frequency band. So SY1 or SY2, they have a larger frequency span or larger frequency band. When you add them up, uh, you get Y2, YT, and into YT, we multiply PN1T for receiving for the receiver purpose. When you multiply PN1T, it will receive back TD because uh, TC will be multiplied by again PN1T to give you TD or SX. So uh, after passing through the uh, low pass filter, you will get the required signal back. So CDMA transmitters, usually they will broaden the data spectra because of encoding it onto chip sequences. This method of broadening the data spectra is called spread spectrum. What is the advantage of broadening the data spectra? Because you have a broad data spectra, which means the bandwidth is more, so we can have more information. In CDMA, we have more information. So CDMA receiver correlates with the desired transmitter code. So once you have the desired transmitter code, as we discussed, the codes are orthogonal to each other. So if a code is multiplied by itself, it will give you one. If it is multiplied by other code, orthogonal code, it will give you zero. So since they are orthogonal, so everything will be zero except one, which is the self code, self uh, thing. So you will receive back the spectra of the desired channel that reverts back to its original width. The spectra of one desired channel remains broad or they are lost. They can mostly be filtered out by the low pass filter. Now, uh, let us have a small discussion on CDMA. The, with the CDMA, since the dat bandwidth is broadened, so uh, data one or the transmitter one and transmitter two, both the transmitter are going to occupy the same frequency band that we have seen. Since they are going to occupy the same frequency band, there is a chance of interference, small interference. While they are getting transmitted, there is a chance of interference, which can give rise to the problem of ISI. ISI stands for inter-symbol interference. So that gives you a problem of ISI. This is a problem with CDMA. But uh, then second is the advantage with this is same code is multiplied at the receiver for detection. So once you multiply the code for detection, you are throwing away all other orthogonal codes. Only the orthonormal code is detected, which is the code that we have seen. So in this type, what is done? Technically, what is done is you are given a handset. The handset will have a unique code itself. When you are purchasing the handset, within the handset, in the software of handset, there is a unique code 
uh, already embedded in the handset and that code the transmitters will be transmitting that code when your number uh, they are transmitting to you that code will be there therefore you can receive it that is it uges the frequency band of 1.25 megahertz cdma usually use this frequency band but 1.25 megahertz is not large so information content is small so to increase that we have white uh, rcdma wcdma in this the frequency band is wider uh, comparatively more wider four times wider so frequency band is 5 so the channel capacity goes up by five, uh, uh, four times limitations are you have less data rate there can be congestion because all the frequency are being used at a time so congestion can be there and since you are using a whole frequency band the spectrum is wasted for one uh, user if you are using whole frequency band the wastage there is a resource wastage so there can be resource wastage and and bandwidth efficiency is less so these are the things with cdma then we will come to ultra wideband uwb is a recent technique how uh, it came uh, in around uh, first half of this uh, century uh, first uh, decade of this century the uwb technique can uh, this uses extreme case of spread spectrum communication spread spectrum means spectrum is spread from that we call spread spectrum which means bandwidth small bandwidth is converted to a large bandwidth larger bandwidth so you extend the bandwidth that is what is spread spectrum that we have done in the cdm the amber um, that there is a limit you cannot extend it infinite so in cdma we extend it by as as we discussed 1.25 megahertz or 5 megahertz that is the bandwidth we extend but in uwb if you want to spread it beyond that then we come to uwb uwb is a, a um, spectrum which is about from 3 i will give you the exact number it is from about 3 to 10 gigahertz not megahertz gigahertz megahertz means the frequency number into 10 to the power 6 that is megahertz gigahertz is the frequency number into 10 to the power 9 which means uh, 1000 times more than megahertz so that much of uh, bandwidth we get ultra wide band so it takes advantage of sun's theorem as i told you bandwidth is increased means channel capacity is increased so data rate data rate will go up proportional to the bandwidth but problem is it degrades only logarithmically with sn so even if sn is uh, bad then also the degradation is not very high it is not linear or square it is logarithmic so it is smaller so degrades only logarithmically with sn it uses very low energy emission for hot for every hot the energy emission is low since energy emission is low for hot therefore uh, the possibility of biological hazards is less uh uwb standard nowadays is uh, fcc federal uh, communication communication uh, by, by federal communication commission in usa it allowed uh, for uwb 3.1 to 10.6 gigahertz that is the bandwidth there are two separate ipp standards which which have been developed now uh, one says that this is the standard other one says that if it is more than 40% bandwidth then it is uwb so on these two are there then uwb approach how to get uwb there is a pulsed uwb so you send pulses this narrow pulses the narrower is the, the pulse the wider is the bandwidth so you send narrow pulses that is pulsed uwb or ofdm uwb 
OFDM stands for Orthogonal Frequency Domain. Sorry, uh, Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Axis. So OFDM UWB. False UWB. Uh, you will not believe it. Marconi invented it without knowing that it is UWB. So false UWB is basically a form of TDMA at different time slots. You are sending pulses. That is called false UWB. OFDM UWB, this utilizes the knowledge base of narrowband systems. So if you have narrowband systems, you will use the knowledge base. So using this, if you have narrowband systems and you are using the knowledge base of narrowband systems, then you can use strong jammers. So you, you can avoid strong jammers, uh, strong jammers because of the broad bandwidth, since we have a larger bandwidth, a jammer can jam only a small portion of the signal, small portion of the spectrum. So since we have a larger bandwidth, if you uh, move your information out of the jamming band, the jammer can be avoided. Jammer is made useless. Now, in the pulse uh, UWB, you can see here we have a pulse UWB. UWB over which we are superimposing the narrowband signal. So frequency you can see on one side, y-axis is the amplitude. We have a narrowband frequency at, and UWB. That, that you can see. And you can see the narrowband in the, in the lower band, lower picture, you can see the signal, narrowband signal, which is the green one, and the UWB, which is the uh, pulses. So when we have pulses, that multiplied by the narrowband gives you the upper one. So data encoded in the pulse train, impulse train will encode the data. Multipath can be exploited, multipath means from one point you are transmitting. So suppose you have your phone, you, it is transmitting, it will go in all directions. It will go to the wall in front of you. It will go to the wall uh, on both sides of you. It will go to the roof. It will go to the uh, earth or below the um, uh, floor. So it will go to the floor from every point. It will get reflected and it will go to the tower. Uh, so the tower will receive your transmitted signal from multiple parts. That is called multipath. So that can be exploited here in this case. No narrowband filters, array for baseband filters are not required in this trans receiver. We don't require any filter because it is ultra wideband. So filtering is not necessary. Extremely tight time synchronization is essential. That is only important part. It have to synchronize in time. When you have sending the pulse, pulse is to be received in exactly same time. That synchronization is essential. Okay. Then uh, finally we will come to OFDM uh, UWB. OFDM stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing. This can take advantage of the knowledge in narrowband communication that you have developed earlier. This involves the usual blocks of narrowband system like filters, low noise amplifiers, LNA stands for low noise amplifiers, etc. Bandwidth of each channel is much wider because of the UWB. Filtering is easier than narrowband systems because we have wide, uh, uh, wider channel. SNR requirement in each channel is much lower than the narrowband system because we have more bandwidth. So SNR is not going, SNR is bearing only logarithmically, so that is not going to affect us. More digital processing than the pulsed OFTM and strong jammers can be avoided. With this, uh, we come to the conclusion of our discussion on the overview of uh, communication or what we are going to read. Uh, if you have any questions or doubts, we can discuss that. Otherwise, uh, we'll stop here for today. Next class, we'll start the
Ariel Pos. Oh.